And so knowing that subscribers is, is, is a nice thing to have, but realizing that if that's your only motivator, like you're gonna come up short. You gotta have a bigger why. You gotta realize I'm here because I have a message. I have a mission. I have a greater purpose with what I wanna accomplish. So you may be trying to grow your YouTube channel this year and your goal might be to actually get to 100,000 subscribers. My name is Heather Torres and I am the host of the Think Media Podcast. And today I'm so excited because I have my friend and fellow VRA member, Justin Sch Oh man, I was going to say co and You corrected Koo. yourself. No, you got it right. Hey, we're keeping it in there. I'm VRA member Justin Koo with me on the podcast today. We're going to be breaking down his seven tips from going from zero to over 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. But Justin, for the audience who's just getting to know you, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what your channel is about. Sure. My name is Justin Koo. I'm a husband and a new father. And on my channel, I host explicit conversations on belief and the stories that shape them. And so in essence, my show uh, is kind of an across the aisle type of show where I oftentimes expose myself to people with a different life story, a uh, different set of beliefs, and, and really for the purpose not of debate, but to understand and to empathize and to build relationships. Uh, the show is called I'm Listening, and a good chunk of the show, I'm just sitting there listening to what they have to say. I also love listening to your content. I'm listening as you are going into these uh, deep conversations and really just hitting different taboos um, and things like that. So, so appreciate the work that you're doing, but this has been a journey, right? It's not mm -hmm. like you just came on YouTube yesterday and got to over a hundred thousand subscribers. So talk to me a little bit about the journey. How did you start? And then we're gonna dig into your seven tips. Yeah, so it must have been five or six years ago I started YouTube. Uh, I was teaching at a school, at a Bible college actually, and one of the students who came through shared his story of faith, which was, it was because of a YouTube video that he had this life-changing moment. And it was it was kind of in that moment, I'm like, oh my goodness, like video is powerful. It has the potential to reach people, not on a surface level, it's not just about cat videos or social experiments, but like it can change a person's life in a significant way. And I, and I thought, that's brilliant. I wanna try and be a part of that. Uh, I remember Googling for YouTube courses and I stumbled across the beta uh, VRA. Like this was before it was polished. I don't even think you guys were in Kajabi at the time. It was just like things were falling apart. The roof was leaking. All these is like literally one of the emails. I'm like, hey guys, can you guys go and click all the buttons and tell us if something's broken? And I did that and I'm like, yeah, that one's broken and that one's broken. Yes. Um, but I found you guys and found a community and, and this was kind of me diving in head first and and as they say, the rest is history. I, I think 10 months later, I ended up quitting my job as a faith move, not because I was making millions and millions of dollars, <laughs> yeah. but I was like, I'm so I'm so convinced that this matters and I want to be a part of this. And so I launched in head first and, and we've been doing it full time ever since. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the things we're going to dive into the seven tips, but, you know, 100,000 subscribers is such this this YouTube milestone, right? I mean, it's cool. Like yeah, you do yeah. get cool plaques and yep. it is a recognition I, I got piece. mine, uh, I think last year, maybe yeah. a year before, something yeah. like that. But man, there's such a journey along that way. So I wanna dive into these seven tips. Um, and number one was actually that 100,000 subscribers doesn't matter. Yeah, and you might have clicked on the video because like, oh, I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. And I remember what that was like. I remember having goals and wanting to hit these milestones. And that's cool. If it, if it helps motivate you, it helps get you out of bed, helps you to hit record every once in a while, like good, use that, that fuel, use that energy. But at the end of the day, one of the things that I'm more convinced now than ever is that these are just vanity numbers. Like, and, and they don't really accomplish much. It might have been true that, you know, 10 years ago, the old YouTube mm -hmm. subscribers mattered because mm -hmm. whenever you would create a video, Video, it would be sent to all of your subscribers. But now that's just not the case. You don't need subscribers to be able to reach people. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, there's oftentimes channels that have less subscribers, but that have larger reach. And so I, I think it's just important to be able to have your eye on the right target. Because mm -hmm. if you have the right, the wrong aim, even if you're successful, you're still missing. And so knowing that subscribers is, is, is a nice thing to have, but realizing that if that's your only motivator, like you're gonna come up short. You gotta have a bigger why. You gotta realize I'm here because I have a message. I have a mission. I have a greater purpose with what I wanna accomplish. I want to jump up and down right now. <laughs> that makes me so excited. Um, and not for like a braggadocious way, but we hit a million subscribers 
And the next day we got up and we did the same the same day. day. It's the, like, it was the same thing. It's almost like when you have a big milestone birthday. 100%. And I, I, that's how I love to help people understand it. It's like, man, if you hit, you know, maybe you turn 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 and you think something's going to happen and you wake up the next day nope. and got to do the same routine yeah. and the whole thing. Well, I, I remember getting my silver play button mm-hmm. in, 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 the, in the mail and I'm like, I've been working for this day for so many years. And it was a really cool moment. I called one of my buddies. I was like, hey, would you mind helping get a bunch of photos for Instagram and like there was this moment where I I indulged my vanity I indulged the the hard work and all of that I took the photo and now it's under my bed Mm -hmm. like it's in the box it's (laughs) not even on my wall it's like this thing that just like I use sometimes as a makeshift tripod like it's it's it just it doesn't matter as much as I thought it would matter. Yeah, because you said it, it's building something bigger beyond just YouTube. And that's what we want you to know here on the Think Media Podcast. Why I want to have these conversations is because, yes, I get it. Like, I want to get as many play buttons as I can because it means I'm reaching people. And even today um, uh, in our our calls that we have as a team, um, we do customer success every single call because there's so many success stories that are big and small, right? It's not just about the numbers. And we had a customer success story today of uh, of a woman who started her YouTube channel in attraction marketing. I mean, talk about like, let's be like super narrow right. on what she's doing. She's like 400 subscribers, but she sent us a testimony that said, because I have built a business around what I'm doing and I'm using YouTube to get leads and get clients mm-hmm. and get people into mm-hmm. my world, she's making $10,000 a month with wow. 400 subscribers. Yeah. So it's, it's the equivalent of subscribers to income actually isn't a big deal. What matters most yeah. to YouTube is minutes matter most. They want Mm -hmm. people on the platform. They want people diving in, which is why I love the content you're doing now. And I love the content you were doing before, but now it's long form. It's keeping them there. It's people are digging in and it becomes something more than just, um, than just, you know, cat videos, like you said. And, uh, number two actually is that, uh, consistency matters. So actually getting to these vanity numbers is a good thing, but really what matters is staying consistent. Why is that a thing? for you and for creators who are just starting and just need to know that while it can be difficult to get a video out every single week for the last six years, you know, or whatever that was, um, it matters. Yeah. Uh, Well, consistency matters so much because it's, it's just the only dependable strategy you can rely on. I mean, you think about it in like financial competency, right? Yes, you could win the lottery and that is a path to success, but like, I don't think you're wise to bet on winning the lottery if you're trying to be financially secure. It happens. It's a real thing. Clearly it does, but like it's not repeatable. In the same way, you know, getting a viral video might actually happen. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I hope it does for you because like that's great. It just accelerates your growth. But but the reality is, is that for most of us, we we don't have viral videos. Right. Um, and so that's why consistency, mat- consistency matters the most. But, but, but also it matters because it actually helps teach you how to grow and how to develop. It's like riding a bike. You could read a book on riding a bike and like you can fill your head with all the knowledge, but until you get on a bike and fall down a hundred times, you're never gonna learn how to ride a bike. And so the you know the advice that I'm giving people is like you have to be willing to make a hundred pieces of content that each get less than a hundred views. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not willing to do that, then you really haven't paid the price that that you need to pay in order to be successful in whatever way that you want to be successful. Yeah, I equate it to uh, man. It sounds like oh yeah, okay, Heather, consistency matters. You guys say that all the time, you know, yeah. and and but it does. Yeah. And, and right now I'm in this huge project. Mm-hmm. I'm writing a book. It's going to come out uh, next year. And man, when we talk about, uh, you know, what could these book sales be? And this is just, just an example, but w- like, what could these book sales be? We've got this number, obviously we're like, yeah, it'd be great to hit that number, but actually what we're focused on are what are the outputs we can do? Hmm. What are the things we can commit ourselves to? Like what kind of outputs are you, are yeah, you like thinking of? How many shows can I go on? How mm-hmm. many YouTube videos can I make about it? How many Instagram posts can I do? What is the output that I'm going to commit myself to? Mm-hmm. to be able to even just get that out there. And I think as YouTubers in in any other sense, if you were to go and open a coffee shop, it's not like you're like, well, I think I'm only going to open my doors maybe three days a week. Right. You, know, you want to be open as much as you can. Yeah. And so the more videos you can do, the more consistent you can be, the more opportunities you have to reach the people you want to reach. Right. And the more you actually define your message. Mm-hmm. If you make two YouTube videos and you're like, no one's watching. Yeah. And then we watch it and we're like, because you don't have a consistent message. Right. Consistency of the messaging is what helps people trust you over time. Well, and this is, we, we understand this in every other area of life. The more right. seed that you sow, the more likely you're gonna have a harvest. That's yeah. just the way that the world works. Yeah, yeah, so I love that. So you learned uh, 
subscribers don't matter in that respect. To getting to 100K is great, but it, there's more beyond 100K. Mm -hmm. um, consistency matters. Next one actually is to focus on going deeper rather than wider. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so in, in my context, this is something that I've, I've seen happen in kind of the other type of workspace that I work in. I, I work with a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that a lot of churches are, are thinking about is like, how do we grow our church larger? How do we serve more people? How are we able to spread a message that we believe in you know, to more people? And that's great. But one pastor gave me advice. He said, instead of looking over the person's shoulder, looking for the next person to walk through the doors, what if you just looked at the person who's in front of you and loved on them and served them well? Mm -hmm. And it's just this idea of like, listen, if you're always looking for the next person, then there's a, there's a certain sense when people show up, they realize like, oh, you weren't actually here for me. You're here mm -hmm. for someone else. You're here for a vanity metric. You're here for a number. So if we're able to shift our focus away from focusing on all these other flashy, colorful things, but instead we're focusing on, hey, you're the one person who's watching the video today. How do I interact with you well? How do I actually serve you well? What are the problems and challenges that you're facing? And if I can dive deep into my community, that's, that's a way to build trust. That's a way to, 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 make, uh, to, 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 to build influence. And, and, and kind of a, a tandem strategy with this is that the, as you go deeper in this way, you're by definition creating your niche. Yeah. You're, you're discovering your niche a little bit more, which as, as everyone who's watched any of your guys' videos, you know that that's the step number one. You yes. have to have a clearly defined niche. Well, going deep is the way that you discover and serve your niche better. Yeah, and we have seen that over and over and over again is that when you just try and cast this wide net, man, people just want your help. People yeah. want to be people want to be in community with you. They want they want what you have to offer. So when you do keep just looking for the next thing, they feel so undervalued. Mm -hmm. And it actually goes into the next point, which is number four, when you go deeper rather than wider, you can actually have options to diversify your income because people have a problem and multiple problems usually where you can then help and serve them. So talk about number four, which is in building to 100,000 that you should be focused not on the number of that, but on diversifying the income streams into that thing. Yeah, so, so one of the things that I thought that I would have as my path to success when it comes to financial success on YouTube was, okay, if I hit 100,000 subscribers, well, that means that I'm gonna be doing X number of views every single month, which multiply the ad revenue, okay, then, then I can start to see the numbers adding up. Well, clearly we know that that's just not the case for most of our smaller or medium-sized channels, like ad revenue is not gonna be significant enough. So we, we, we learn strategies through VRA, like you know affiliate links and sponsorships and things like that. And that all works in, in a lot of niches, but it felt unnatural to my niche. Yeah. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm talking about faith, it, you know, no one loves the televangelist who passes the, the collection bucket, like, and I didn't wanna be that person. So it felt like my hands were tied. How do I actually turn this into something sustainable? Yeah. Well, what I realized is by hitting record like a hundred times a year or more than a hundred times a year is that I was developing a skill. And sometimes that skill was in the process of like, hey, hosting an interview, like hosting a podcast mm -hmm. became a skill of mine. Mm -hmm. So what did it look like to shop out that skill to say, hey, there's an organization that I value, that I trust, that I want to work with. And I say, hey, I got the skill set. I can deliver you a 50 episode podcast for this amount of money. You do no work that turned out to be a, uh, to be a, an actual income revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Or realizing that, hey, the process of filming a video, I learned and developed a, 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 an art form, a skill set around making videos. Yeah. So what does that look like to turn that into to creating my first you know, 10 part documentary series and mm -hmm. selling that as a, as a service? And then you know, I, for every thumbnail that I'm creating, I'm doing multiple photographs and start to turn that into a revenue stream. And so what I learned was that YouTube was kind of like school. Yeah. Uh, and no one expects to go to school and make money. Mm -hmm. You go to school to learn. Mm -hmm. And once you develop these skills and you're able to employ them in the world, and what turns out is like, that's actually a way more fun way to do things. Because if YouTube died tomorrow and all my money is in ad revenue and sponsorships that are mm -hmm. distributed through my YouTube channel that has 100,000 subscribers, but YouTube dies tomorrow, like there goes all my money. Yeah. But if I know how I can, because I've faced rejection a hundred times, because I've had videos that flopped a hundred times. Like I know what it's like to go and knock on doors at local businesses and say, "Hey, I got the skill set. I noticed that you, local dog shop, you know, you don't have a podcast yet. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to do that for you. What mm -hmm. would it look like so for I, for me to be able to serve you well? Mm -hmm. I've done that, and I've been able to turn that into revenue. And so it's actually a really cool way that I can do what I do on YouTube from a purely passion perspective. I do it because I love it, mm -hmm. because I believe in it, and the the rest of this stuff happens in the background, and it kind of 
it all works out because of the skills that I've learned on YouTube. Man, oh, we're gonna dive deeper. I wanna do a bonus episode just for the ministry community or the faith-based community, because sure. we have a lot of people that are in the Think Media community who want to do what you're doing and can't see that path and really wanna figure out how to how to connect those dots. So I wanna do a separate episode just on that part of it. Sure. Um, but I wanna go into number five, which is don't be afraid to try new things. Maybe walk us through just a little snapshot of the journey of the now Justin Koo channel, yeah. but it was that Christian vlogger channel. You even switched whole brandings, the whole thing. Yeah. So like, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, how do you see that as being helpful to get to that 100,000? I, I think it's helpful in a number, number of reasons because it, one, it helps you just discover your voice a little bit more. Trying different formats and different approaches does give you an, uh, a different lens with which to view how do you want to deliver and serve your community. I think it also helps because it, it, it's fresh. It gives your, your diehard community kind of like a breath of fresh air. If you're always doing the same thing and showing up in the same way, it can get tiring a little bit. So what that looked like in my in my context when I first started, that Christian vlogger was the name of the channel. Mm -hmm. It was me vlogging. And what I found was like, this is a really time intense. If anyone's ever tried to do <laughs> daily or just even weekly vlog, you know how much work it is. Mm -hmm. And I was just dying. Like, and so I started to do like talking head videos. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, I could turn out one a, one a week very easily. And that's super fun. So I did that for a season. And then I started to see that, you know, YouTube had just really like leaned in algorithm wise to the, like the live content. Yeah. So I started doing a daily live stream and I realized like I'm able to go really deep with like a small percentage of my audience. And that was a fun learning experience. So I've gone from, you know, the vlogging experience to the monologues to doing live streams. I've, and I've probably done at least a hundred episodes of each of these styles of content. Yeah. And now I'm doing like more of the long form podcast style. And so what happens is like, I have a well-rounded skill set. So now when TikTok is blowing up and I just like, as you know, we've yep. been talking in the car, I just started my TikTok like two weeks ago. What took me a whole year to get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I thought I was on the fast track. Mm -hmm. What I've been able to do is I've tried so many different formats that when a new uh, medium shows up, I'm like, it's very easy to be like, oh, well, I can pivot really fast. And now I'm turning out content really quick. I've hit 10,000 subscribers in, in two weeks. Yes. And so it's just, you develop the skill set, you're able to become much more well rounded. And, you know, back to the monetization thing, you're able to sell that skill set yeah. in multiple different areas and help many different types of clients. Yeah. And not being afraid to even switch your entire brand. Right. Like people don't even want to get started, Justin, because they're like, I don't know what my name should be. I'm like, pick yeah. a name yeah. <laughs> because you can change it. It's okay. Um, you can develop a second brand. There's so many things you can do. We even did it here on this podcast. Yeah. We started it. We molded around for two years. And then we were like, we need to just start this thing. Cause mm. if we don't start it now, we're not going to start it. So we started it. It was called the think marketing show. Now it's just the think media podcast. And now we have all these other shows that we're going to be creating under that umbrella, but it took us doing over a hundred episodes, maybe, maybe 50 episodes before we were like, you know what, this isn't actually the direction we want to go. Mm. Let's pivot. Let's do these things. Yeah. And it just, when you get to try new things, it, it doesn't have to be forever. It could mm -hmm. be for a season. It yeah. could be three videos. It could be that maybe you just went live two times to just try it. Uh, people like fresh and new. And so how can you bring that to your audience yeah. to make it fun? I mean, if you look through my library of content, you'll see probably at least a dozen like first episodes of a series mm -hmm. that never made it past a first episode. Yeah. And I like, and you go to the call to action, like in my next one, I'm going to be talking about this and this, and it just never happens because <laughs> you realize in the process, uh, maybe that's just not what I want to show up as. That's not what I want to give, or maybe it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to try those things. It's okay to, 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 to throw a Hail Mary every once in a while and mm -hmm. see what happens. Yeah. And people listen to me, please start, pick a platform, pick a, pick a strategy and just get started. Cause you're going to change it a hundred times throughout the whole thing. Yeah. But if you don't even just pick something, you won't even start. And so just mm -hmm. let it go. Justin said right now you need to try new things. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Number six, I'm just looking at my phone here. Number six is invest into what you are trying to grow in. And you gave a little bit of the story that, you know, uh, you had jumped into video ranking Academy. It's not like you were making millions of dollars when you decided to no. join video ranking Academy. 
And that's just one part of education. You invested in the gear and you invested in leveling yourself up with learning other things, learning how to edit, learning, you know, different, uh, learning how to market, learning how to start a business, all of these pieces. But why is it so important that if you're within that zero to 100, uh, thousand subscribers that you turn internal and put your money in yourself, put your money yeah. into what you want to become. Yeah. Uh, for me, one of the things that I valued is trying to understand why, why is something not working? Why is something working? I think even uh, maybe a scarier place than having little subscribers and little viewers is having a viral success, having a million subscribers and not knowing why, mm. not knowing what worked, how did this reach people? What are people coming back for? And then you just got this massive amount of anxiety, this imposter syndrome that shows up. Like, so, so for me, one of the things I'm wanting to do is with it, whether a video hits or it's a miss, whether it's a success or a failure, I wanna learn from it. Mm. I wanna understand what's going on. And sometimes that happens through like a course like you're talking about. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's through the YouTube secrets book. Sometimes that's through getting personal one-on-one -on -one coaching or whatever the case is. Mm. Name all of the things we give. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Affiliate links in the description <laughs> yeah, below. Everything's level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but but just being able to understand why, like that, like if part of what I'm offering as a service is is offering creative skills to other people, I need to be able to just say not only, hey, have I done the work, have I grown a channel, but I can actually understand and give you an intelligent reason as to why things are working. So when I give you advice. It, it lands better. Like mm -hmm. there's a there's a, there's a reason behind it. Mm -hmm. um, investing yourself is, is is so important. If YouTube again, if YouTube was to go kaput, and now we have this new platform that where all the attention is, like if you don't know why you're growing on YouTube, if you don't know the principles behind it, like you're not going to be able to successfully transition. Mm -hmm. And so investing in yourself more than you're investing in anything else, like that's that's just the only way to be able to be successful. Yeah, and for me it was things like um, buying online courses, buying the books, not even that, going to the library, but it also also was going to conferences. Yeah. It was getting around people, investing, taking the leap of saying like, no, I, I do want to do this. I want to get around other people that are doing this. And that could be virtually, or that could be in person. And, and I think that was such a huge thing. You came to grow with video live mm -hmm. one, got around people and you found other people, even in the space that you're in, right. that you could just kind of bounce ideas off of and, and feel like you're a part of that community. Well, and, and that, I mean, that was super valuable. In addition to that, one of the other things that I would do is I I would find people that are in my niche, but who are states away, and I would prioritize uh, saving money to buy a plane ticket, to fly out there, spend a weekend with people. Yes, to do the collaborating, to be able to try and grow each other's channels, but also the conversations around dinner. Like yeah. those are huge. Like what is working? What is not working? What are we trying to accomplish as a, like, you know, a general community? Like those are learning experiences mm -hmm. and prioritizing in that helps you build a network, helps you have other people to rely on and it just, it makes everything better. Oh, so good. We're going to get into um, the last one, but if you're getting value out of this and you're watching on YouTube right now, hit the, the subscribe button if you want to hear more conversations like this and actually let me know so far what's been your biggest aha and I think really we're going deep into beyond just like get views get subscribers this is building something of purpose that matters that's helping people and you're so knowledgeable Justin in just how you've been able to you know not not necessarily know the path forward but just start walking in it and start going in it so let me know in the comments if you're listening on the podcast right now I'd love for you right now to take a screenshot screenshot, go over to your Instagram, upload that on stories and tag us both. Cause yeah. I want to know, uh, if you're loving this, um, one, I'll put our, our, uh, what are those called? Handles. handles. I'll put our handles down <laughs> in the description, um, of both YouTube and over on the podcast, but, uh, tag us, let us know that you're listening. All right. Number seven is build a team. Hmm. More creators need to hear this because yeah. your creators that are at the top of the mountain are not doing this alone. And if hmm. they are, they are probably on the verge of burnout or they're doing it paycheck to page. I mean, they're literally on just the brink of not being able to do it. So right. building a team, especially as you're moving into new seasons of life and moving into creating this business around it, what has that done for you in the 100,000? And did you build a team before 100 or was it after 100? I, I want to say- 1,000, 100,000, sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I had, uh, the, the team that we have now is a team that's been assembled after 100,000. Okay. But the impact of it is is dramatic. Whereas I would spend, I don't know, 20 hours a week editing my own content. Yeah. Now I spend almost no hours a week. You know, like I'm, I'm, I get to do the part of the, of 
content creation that I love, yeah. that I feel like is uniquely me. And then I get to rely on people who are much better at all the other things than I am, mm-hmm. whether that's the story editing, that's the actual physical editing of it, or the, you know, like I get to depend on the expertise of other people, and mm-hmm. that's been tremendous. I think one of the other things that it allows me to do is it actually gives me an in to participate in other creative people's projects. Yeah. So one of the biggest objections that I would have had hearing this kind of advice of building a team. It's like, okay, yeah, if you have money, of course, build a team. But like, I, I didn't have money when I was building a team. What I did have is I had other creatives in my in my niche, in my network, who were also in the starving artist kind of a phase. Yeah. And you know, what I could bring to the table, because they, like say, I have a friend who's a, who's a writer. He writes a blog, does a fantastic job with writing, but doesn't, ha- doesn't even own a camera, mm-hmm. much less know how to work it and take good photos or videos or anything else like that. What does it look like for me to f- serve and to volunteer for an entire day, help him record a month's worth of content mm-hmm. for no cost? And then in response, like I spend that one day with him, he then turns around and spends an entire day editing a lot of my stories and, and crafting the, 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 the story arcs that I want to be able to present. We can just do an exchange for services. And what happens is that his work is elevated and my work is elevated. And we've developed this natural relationship with each other so that when a paying client shows up, which is this is actually kind of how it's been happening, yeah. that there's a client who says, hey, friend over here who does all the great writing, we wanna hire you with this budget to do this, this, and this is marketing campaign, this writing campaign, whatever the case is, we would love for you to participate. He's like, oh, cur- perfect, I'll do it, and I know just the guy to partner with. Mm-hmm. And vice versa, if someone says, hey, we want you to do a documentary, I'm like, hey, I don't wanna edit that. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't wanna have to even write that. I wanna be able to sit down and, and film it and do the parts that I love to do, so I'm gonna bring him on. And so what, what we're leaning into is this concept of like the rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah. And if you're able to serve someone else who has a weakness that you you have a strength in and vice versa, you're going to be able to go so much further and so much faster. Um, beyond that, like sacrificing your own money to do it. I, I would think about it this way. It's like, okay, if I'm editing my own video and I'm taking 20 hours to do it, even if I'm making minimum wage, mm-hmm. there's a cost there. There's an opportunity cost. Mm-hmm. What does it look like for me to actually pay someone out of my own pocket, but then be able to redeem that time to be used in building the business in another aspect? Could I redeem that time and actually maybe land another business deal, mm-hmm. land another project where I'm actually net winning, where I'm able to pay someone so that they can take care of their family and I have more income because I'm not doing it by myself anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I there's a couple of things you said I want people to really take away from. One, the self-sacrifice. You know, it, again, and I, we can't say this enough. It's not like people that are building teams are making millions of dollars. They're ba- basically making enough that they can then sacrifice a little so they can gain more on the back end. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that, that you said when we were in the car, when I asked you about your editor, um, you're paying someone three times their living wage. Yeah. And so you're, you're benefiting- Sometimes a, five times. Sometimes five times uh, someone's living wage. And he's an amazing editor. Yeah, you wouldn't fantastic. even know. Look at, his, look at his content. He's an amazing editor. And even for us here at Think, you know, now we are 18 strong, full time with salaries and you know we're doing we're doing like we're a company now we are legit like making it all happen hr there's policies you know the whole thing Mm -hmm. um and that was not where we started we Mm -hmm. started with hey Omar, can you for some tacos come and help us film this? <laughs> tacos thing? are always a you know? win. You can and, lead with tacos. And Omar was so skilled in what he did that he made the process go faster. Mm. And when you hire a team, you now are doing something beyond yourself. Well, but the, the, I mean, even rewind the tape a little bit further back. This is what happened between you and Sean. Yeah, yeah. You guys started true. for free, helping each other out yeah. with skill sets, and you just elevated each other. Yeah. And it's because of that sacrifice you were willing to put in. I'm guessing dozens, if not hundreds, of hours Three for months. free. Yeah. Uh-huh. Three Three months of full-time free work, you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and that's exactly it. We, we both had skill sets that we brought to the table. And because of that, I've now developed the skill to be able to do this. I was not this girl no, when we started. Not. No, you I remember. Know, you remember. <laughs> I was the girl that was like behind the keyboard, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I've been able to develop to this. But the other part when you start hiring a team is you got to get your video into them. Mm-hmm. It makes consistency happen. Yeah. Oh, that's then true. you're like, well, how ca-? Your, your brain starts to go to, well, how can I make more revenue? And then you start to diversify, like building that first team member, I think is so critical if you're building a channel because it makes you start to think beyond this could be a thing to, oh, this has to be a thing now. Yeah. I got to figure this out. And when you start to shift into that mindset, opportunity comes, yeah. collaborations come. There's so much more that happens in abundance 
for that channel than if you were to just do it by yourself. It, it also unlocks the door towards, towards longevity. Yeah. Because if you're like any other average human, you're spending 10, 20 hours editing your own content. And I think about the community that I serve, pastors who are wanting to step into the digital space, they've already got work. They got to do visitations. They got to do sermon writing. They got to do all, like, you know, sitting on the board of the church and whatever else that they're doing. If they're adding another 20 hours onto their, their workload to edit a video, like they're burnt out very quickly. Mm -hmm. So just giving that work to someone else and actually being able to buy back your own time to be a husband, to be a, to be a wife, like that might just be more worth it. Yeah, definitely. Well, Justin, I so appreciate you. I cannot believe it's been six years. We are heading into, we've just begun. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. I mean, we, we're where we are today, but we're just beginning. I'm so grateful that you invested in us, that we got to become not just, you know, some mentors in your life. Is it weird to say no, mentors? No, I, 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 I tell people, because, because you know, people will send me screenshots of like that, that my face in, yeah. the, in Sean's slide talking about VRA or whatever the case is. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, he's my buddy, he's my coach, he's like, he's my mentor. Yeah. And they're like, oh wow, that's amazing that you even know him. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. All, it, that's exactly it, how I see you guys. Yeah. It feels weird for me to say that because I feel like we're just on this journey together. Yeah. Like, I feel like I learned so much from you just as much as you're learning from us. But I'm so grateful that you're part of our community, that you're helping people in this way, um, and just beginning. So so excited. Where can people go if they want to see more about the content? you're creating and they want to get connected to you? Uh, everything is tied to my name, Justin Koo, K-H-O-E. So the website's justinkoo.com. My YouTube channel is Justin Koo. Uh, Instagram is jkoo, which unfortunately looks a lot in text, like J-K Ho, but it is J <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and on TikTok, it is Justin Koo. Go follow him on TikTok. I was watching your TikToks today and I was like, I need to get on this. I need to start doing this. <laughs> well, you're this. saying that because the last two TikToks were filmed outside of your house. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> and so every week we love to to read your comments that you're leaving over on Apple. And today's comment of the day comes from Jeff A811. He says, love it. Loved the latest episode, why YouTube creators get stuck and stop growing. Your channel and podcast isn't the first I found for helping in growing my influence and impact online, but it's the one I listen to most regularly because I think it's the most real and helpful. Thank you explanation point. Also just listened to the book, YouTube secrets, because I just couldn't get enough. The book was awesome as well. Thanks for all the help, tips, advice, and real talk to help my channel get off the ground. Jeff from Doze of Dirt, Dose of Dirt. Jeff, thank you so much for that amazing content. That is what we try and do here. We wanna go deeper in the conversations that creators just like you want to know about. We're we have upcoming episodes about brand deals, about confidence, about how to actually scale a team. How do you do it? And so we're gonna be going deeper into those conversations. But I wanna thank you for being a part of our community here at the Think Media podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it from, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. Are you ready to start or grow your YouTube channel? Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step playbook for YouTube success. We've helped thousands of purpose-driven entrepreneurs just like you grow their influence with video. Register today for this exclusive training at thinkmasterclass.com.